Correct. Next is our board division reports. And I believe we will be hearing from the tax and license division. Very good. Chief Linksavath, pleasure to have you here this afternoon. This is a time scheduled for the board, the industry, and the public to hear about uh, divisions of the Game and Control Board, particularly items of interest that the public would like to know about what your group does on a day-to-day -day basis and how you provide the most effective resources for the state of Nevada. Welcome. Hello, uh, board members, Dr. Watkins, Judge Assad, and Chair Hendrick, <clears throat> also Executive Secretary Rupert, and all of those who are still here in person and uh, online. My name is Chan Linksvot, Chief of the Tax and License Division. Um, I'm happy to have this opportunity to talk about all, to talk about our little division here and uh, spotlight the people within the division. Uh, internally at the board, we're referred to as TNL, but internally, internally, or maybe it's just internally in my head, I refer to us as TLC, and that's representing the three sections within the division. That's tax collection, licensing, and compliance, uh, but also it's who, it's, it's who we are. Um, it's how we operate. We're smaller operators. Um, we're, smaller operators have told us that they really appreciate the quaint and personal touch uh, that, and attention that we receive or that we give them um, when we have our contacts with them. Um, although small, we are far reaching. It would not be surprising to see us. A couple of our agents at border towns like Jackpot near the Idaho border or at Baker at the Utah border and Laughlin at the Arizona border and Verdi in California, or at the California border. So we are proud of that fact and we embrace it. And today, just to give you a quick roadmap of what we'll be discussing, uh, we'll be talking about the staff, uh, three different sections of TLC, then I'll discuss some lesser known things we've handled like Indian gaming and our restricted seminar that we hold uh, now on a bi-monthly basis. Then I'll discuss some common issues we have uh, seen in the industry and bring them to light in hopes of uh, avoiding them in the future. And then finally, I'll end the presentation with some hopefully interesting tidbits and in upcoming news uh, for tax and license. For the staff overview, we have 19 unclassified employees. Those are essentially the agent positions, all the way up to chief. And of those 19, six are CPAs. And I guess just to help our stats out a little, a little bit, one of the CPAs is also an attorney. And uh, I don't know if that helps our reputation or not, but so it is. Uh, we also have an administrative staff of five hard, hardworking individuals. And unfortunately, right now, we, have, we currently have two recent agent openings for our Carson City office. That brings our total to 26 total positions. Uh, the division was materially larger back in the heyday when licensees were sending in paper checks and uh, to pay their taxes. But since then we have required electronic payments and consequently the number of personnel has been reduced. And our management staff, we have myself in Las Vegas. We have Matt Wilkes, who's the deputy chief. He's in Carson City. In Carson City, we also have Andy Lane, he's, who's a supervisor in compliance. Chris Citra, who's the senior agent for compliance. In Las Vegas, we have Jocelyn Mendez, supervisor in the compliance section. Jess Cordial, who's supervisor in the collections and licensing um, section, and then John O'Connor, who's special agent, and Rashmi Kumar, who's a uh, senior agent. So next we'll talk about the first of our TLC here, which is tax collection. As you would guess, it means we collect taxes and fines and fees for all licensees. Um, our tax collection team also handled delinquencies and write-offs. Um, we had approximately 1.2 billion in uh, taxes collected in the last fiscal year. Uh, out of that, $1,035 was uh, written off. So I don't know the math on that, but it's pretty close to 100% collection. Um, and it's not all us, it's easy because if they don't pay they, and they want another have another license, they're gonna have a hard time explaining why they didn't pay their taxes, right? So, uh, but we also distribute funds uh, whether it be to the general fund um, or to the different counties required by law. And uh, on the licensee side, uh, when they want to file their tax forms and make corresponding payments, they go through an online platform we call GCB Apps. And uh, I still believe we have one grandfathered licensee that pays by check, uh, but our office agent, Kim Creon, I, I, she promised me she's working hard to get them up to speed on that to, to pay online. So, um, and for licensing, our second section here is um, anything uh, just to uh, 
it'll eliminate some confusion too that we get sometimes is anything pre-licensing that's uh, Chief Hoffman's division over there and, and crew. Um, they handle anything that um, investigatory that goes all the way up to the board meeting as of today and then commission meeting. Once it's approved, then I call that post-approval. Once it's post-approval, that's where we come into play. Uh, we issue the license itself. We maintain the license, any closures, transfers uh, to and from trusts um, with the help of the attorney general's office, of course, if uh, need be. And uh, if there's anyone that needs to be licensed, we, we uh, send them over to Chief Hoffman's division over there. So um, that's some of the things uh, licensing does. And then we have compliance, which is the, the last of our TLC here. And in uh, August, a couple months ago, the audit division stood right here. I believe it was my good friend, uh, Deputy Chief LeBlanc here. And he stated that audits uh, or the audit division handled all group one casinos and they would um, perform audits and conduct audits. Uh, and that group ones or anything, uh, any casinos that have gaming revenue over 7.3, not uh, 391 million in a fiscal year. That means we handle the group twos, which is below that threshold. Um, we also do reviews for um, for LET, or I'm sorry, for restricted licensees that have or are subject to LET. And then we also do some reviews uh, for manufacturers, distributors, and operators of slot routes, which kind of we call SROs. And our objective in, in compliance is to ensure that gaming laws are followed, uh, proper reporting of revenue, and then proper payment of taxes and fees, of course. In total, we monitor and conduct reviews to close to 500 licensees or so every year um, uh, is who we monitor. And then um, I mentioned a little bit earlier, I talked about Indian gaming. Uh, there's not a lot to talk about here. We, the, the bulk of our time is not spent on Indian gaming, but there are eight compacts out there total and three of them are active and, and operating. If there are issues with that, I, I, we almost always uh, talk to the attorney general's office regarding that too. So. And then to the restricted licensee compliance seminar. Um, we have mentioned today the non-restricted group ones and twos, they were on the agendas uh, or agenda today. And we, we briefly touched upon the restricted licensees just subject to LET. Our restricted licensees are typically these smaller operations that have 15 or less slot machines. They can be in grocery stores, convenience stores, bars and taverns, as we saw in the latter half of the agenda items today. Uh, because they're small and operated by literally literally moms and pops sometimes, we provide compliance seminars to help those licensees with less resources for compliance of gaming laws. Um, some topics covered in that compliance seminar, it's uh, timely filing of fees and taxes, which is very important. Uh, minimum bankrolls is how much they have to keep at each of the place just in, uh, to make sure that they can cover any kind of jackpot that's hit or anything like that. Problem gambling pamphlets, which we require that they have and available to the general public, and prohibi prohibition of minors in gambling. In gambling. Um, there are other subjects too, but those are kind of the main ones. Um, and who should attend? Of course, uh, th those that are required to attend, as we saw in today's agenda, uh, those in the restricted uh, license agenda. agenda. Um, typically, that's a condition that's required of them, but it's also for anyone who wants a refresher um, on, you know, how to run a restricted licensee. And that kind of segues into uh, some common issues that we see. Um, most of those issues come from restricted license, licensees. And for the reasons I mentioned earlier, they have less resources. Uh, they typically need the help. Um, <clears throat> some of the issues that we see are Reg 9010 temporary closures. The board sees that quite a bit. They see OSCs and complaints that come through for that. And that's typically <clears throat> where restricted licensees close down their gaming activity for 30 days or more. And they think as long as they pay their taxes, they're okay. But Reg 9010 states differently. Um, and then also delinquent payments. Uh, typically, they have to pay for their license um, fees before the actual quarter starts or before the year starts. And if they're late by more than 30 days, they can lose their license and that's deemed surrendered and that's just automatically. So there's no, no hearings or anything like that. They just lose it. And that's problematic because then they'll have to refile <clears throat> again with um, investigations and that could be costly to them. So they, they do have to keep that in mind. Um, also in uh, restricted license uh, licensing, um, they, they have to submit diagrams to us on a continual basis if they make any changes. Um, so, 
uh, well, we just tell most of our restricted licensees, you know, give us a call, of course, if they want to, but uh, take the restricted seminar. It's free. It's bi-monthly. They can register online and they can even view it online. And then it's just some, some quick facts that I just wanted to draw out. I wanted to just uh, highlight that. Uh, and we'd like to thank Mike, Mike Lawton, uh, the board's senior economic analyst for that. Uh, we compile or we provide all the raw data, but he kind of compiles all of that and puts his magic on it. So on, uh, as of June 30th, 2023, as I mentioned earlier, we collected close to 1.2 billion in gaming taxes and, and fees. That's roughly a third of the entire state's you know, taxes that's collected. Um, slot machines, there's about 147,000 and total license issued and active is close to 3,000. So those are just little tidbits there. When it comes to upcoming TLC note news, we have ICPs, and that's just in con internal control procedures. And those are um, uh, ICPs that group twos have to kind of pay attention to, to to make sure their internal controls are up to standard for, for us. Um, we try to update that as much as we can, but it's been quite a while. So we have this draft that's out there. An industry notice will be coming out next week to discuss um, the proposal that's out there and for um, the industry to comment on it, to see if they have any um, comments or any, any issues with, with the proposal. Um, so please look out for the industry notice on that. And then we have LET changes, We're working in conjunction with our friends in the audit division, we are looking to streamline LET. And that's just a fancy term for reducing procedures. So hopefully the industry will like that. Uh, industry notice for that will be coming out hopefully within the next few weeks also. Uh, and then there is a audit and tax and license regulatory workshop that's coming up. The industry notice for that has already gone out and it's scheduled for November 28th at 1.30 p.m. At that uh, workshop, the industry can attend and, and let both divisions know if there are any issues out there that have not already been brought to our attention. And more importantly, if there are issues, having an open and frank discussion on possible solutions. And, and uh, it's not on the slide here, but I, I did hear it a few times today regarding the restricted licensees uh, compliance seminar that we don't have dates for 2024 yet. And the reason for that is we are changing it from quarterly to, to bi-monthly or every two months uh, because it's, it's kind of getting full now. So we were just trying to um, add two more uh, two more classes in, in a year. If need be, we'll add more uh, if, uh, if um, there are enough people out there who wants to do it. Um, that's all I have for today. Um, if there are any questions, um, I can't promise answers, but I'll take the questions. Wonderful presentation. Thank you, Chief. Sure. Uh, first of all, I want to echo your comments about the workshop, joint workshop for audit and TLC coming up at the end of November. And uh, exactly as you stated, we're looking for a robust, open uh, conversation with the industry about anything they can do to help us streamline any processes that they think is slowing down either your division or slowing down the industry. So we certainly invite everybody to come to that. I want to commend again your group on the restricted licensee compliance seminars. I attended uh, this summer one of the seminars and was very impressed. And uh, as you mentioned, the board is requiring attendance for all new licensees. So uh, just want to encourage you and all the other divisions to continue to work together to make that something that all of the participants are getting as much information as possible from all the divisions. So if you want to spread it out, if there's enforcement things that restricted licensees need to know about, investigations, anything else, let's be sure we give them as much information as possible. And I really like the idea of bi-monthly because uh, as you see on the conditions, we're usually requiring it within 90 days. So it's great if we're having them every 60 days. So appreciate that and uh, certainly like the idea of TLC. I was trying to start calling it TLC <laughs> division, tender loving care. Very there you good. go. Perfect. Very good. Questions from board members for the chief? I think that's exactly the opposite of what people think of when they think of tax and license, but okay. <laughs> but um, a wonderful presentation. Thank you for your leadership uh, in the tax and license division. And thank you for your presentation here today. I don't have any questions. Thank you. Judge? Excellent, excellent presentation. Very informative. Uh, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Judge. Yeah. Thank you to you and all of your team. And thank you for the presentation today. We appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Chair. Thank you.